Hi, Nicole here. Welcome to my nutrition kitchen. Today is a let's cook and we are going to be cooking a no need wholemeal bread. This bread is so easy to make. I make it about once a week for my husband for his uh, lunches. He likes this. Oh, it makes beautiful toast as well. And so we're going to quickly work through this because it has the cook time it needs to bake for uh, about 55 minutes we are just going to go through the making it and popping it in the oven to start with and then I'll pop some photos in the um, comments to show you what the finished product looks like so let's get started on this shall we first off I'm going to pop the oven on to start heating up um, it starts off, we do a rise in the oven, so we turn it on to 80 degrees Celsius, so just flip the oven on, and that can be preheating while we're putting it all together. Now I've already oiled and floured two loaf tins, because the great thing about this recipe is it makes two loaves, and all you need to do with those is just give it a wipe with um, paper towel with some oil on it and then dust it with some flour and that'll stop the bread sticking to it. So we've got two cups of high grade white flour. This helps with um, making it that little bit lighter and giving it a bit of lift. If you just went totally wholemeal flour, it would re be a really, really dense bread. So that bit of high grade just helps give it some lift. Then we have got three cups of wholemeal flour. And if you wanted, you could even mix the wholemeal, use some wholemeal flour and some rye flour. So you can feel free to mix this up to flavors that you, you like. We've got some rolled oats. There's a cup of rolled oats. And what you can do, if you don't have enough rolled oats, just crush up a wheat bix to make up that uh, one cup measure. With the end of the wheat bix packet, we save the crumbs that are in the bottom and then that will get used in making up this bread. So this you know, reduces that food waste. So a couple of oats. And then I've got here quite a mix of seeds. And it's a couple of seeds. And you can go with whatever mix that you like or you happen to have on hand. So I've got a mix of chia seed, linseed, sesame, pumpkin and uh, sunflower seeds. So just, yeah, mix up a, a cup full, however you like. I've got a tablespoon of instant dry yeast. The reason I'm using an instant dry yeast is it goes in with the dry ingredients. You don't have to do that um, hydrating it and making it all moist first. So we just pop that in. We want a teaspoon of salt. And then just... Mix those to combine the dry ingredients all together. So the yeast and the seeds are all nice evenly distributed throughout. And we'll make a well in the middle and that's where we're going to pop in our wet ingredients. I need some hot water. Now one of the wet ingredients we're actually using in this is a sourdough starter. I don't know if you can see it's got the bubbles there. So this is, has been growing up overnight. Um, I've had this sourdough starter for nearly 12 years. I've managed to keep it alive that long. If you don't have a sourdough starter, that's fine with this recipe. You can just leave that out and instead of using a cup of sourdough starter, just add... Um, three quarters of a cup of water for that portion. Let's give that a bit of a stir. It's not being fed today, so it will be hungry. The salad starter is only in the spread just to add a little bit, bit of flavour and a bit of dimension. That's why you don't have to have it there. But hubby likes the flavour in the bread, so I'm happy to use it. And I'll do a post about making up a sourdough starter and, and keeping it so that if you do want to use that option, you can. And it means you've also got a sourdough starter on hand if you want to make 
proper sourdough bread. So I just, so I've put a cup in there. It's a two cup. I'm lucky I've got a two cup measuring cup. So then I make that up to two cups with water. So I've got a cup of sourdough starter and a cup of cold water in there. It just makes it easy to get the starter out of the out of the jug I find. So we pour that into the middle of that. You could use warm water if you wanted to for that. It doesn't have to be cold water. It's just the, the way I do it. Now we're going to add some honey. The honey is, isn't there to feed the yeast. There's plenty of food in the flour for that. But honey is a natural humectant, which keeps things moist. So it's quite nice to help keep some moisture into the spread. And we want to dissolve that in warm water. So I boiled the kettle up earlier just so that I've got warm water here on hand. Put that in and stir that to dissolve it. And while that's having a moment to soften and dissolve, we will add some cider vinegar. So two, tea two teaspoons of vinegar into there. The acidity, getting a nice pH balance um, can help the yeast rise. That's why you often see some vinegar added into a, a recipe. A little bit warm. The jug didn't boil that long ago, so I'll just cool it down. You only want warm water because otherwise the yeast will uh, not be happy. The yeast likes a temperature around about 40 degrees. And then we'll add that water in. So it's a total of three cups of water, warm water, and a cup of sourdough starter. And then we just stir it all together. And you'll find it's quite a, a wet mix. It's, uh, you don't want to get your hands in there to knead this because you'll just end up a sticky, doughy mess. <laughs> so stir it around. It's more like making a cake than a bread. In that you just mix it up and then you um, pop it straight in the... In the tin and in the oven, you don't have to worry about the whole um, kneading and rising and the bit that takes the time. So that's why you can have this made up. It takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes to put the recipe together, normally, when you not haven't got everything all pre-weighed. And then it takes 55 minutes to bake. So, yeah, less than an hour and a half, you've got two loaves of lovely fresh wholemeal bread. Once you've got that nicely mixed together, you want to take your loaf tins and you want to divide it in half and put half into each tin. You can um, pop it on the scales if you want to be more precise in your half measures. Otherwise you can just do a random guess of, you know, it looks like half. I think this half is bigger than the other half. Let's take a little bit more out of that one. So yeah, just, just aim, rough guess. Then take a little bit of olive oil, just put a splash, about a tablespoon into the bottom of the um, bowl, and use that to oil your hands so that you can flatten out the top of the, the bread without it sticking to your fingers. And just a little trick so that it doesn't rise up and spill over the sides, which can sometimes happen, is if you make a hollow, just make a little dent down the middle of the, the dough there. And so what will happen is as it rises, it'll come up through and it won't all disappear down over the sides. So it really is as simple as that. Those are now ready to pop in the oven. So 
the oven is now up to 80 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to pop those in and then I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. And they will go in there for 20 minutes. And when the timer goes off, I will up the temperature of the oven to 210 degrees Celsius. Reset the timer for 35 minutes. When it goes off, they're done. So what I'll do is, like I said before, I'll pop uh, photos of the finished product in the comments below so you can see what they look like. And I'll put a link in to the description so that you can go and download a copy of the recipe which also has information on how to put together and keep a sourdough bug or sourdough starter if you want to give that a go. So thanks for tuning in and watching along and I will see you again soon. Bye.